The Spanish town police are seeking the public's assistance to reunite this elderly woman who was found wandering along the Spanish town main road in St. Catherine on Wednesday, February 21. She gave her name as Jacqueline Jones and said she was of a Duhaney Park address, but could not provide the exact address. Anyone with information that can assist the police in reuniting Jacqueline Jones with her family is being asked to contact the Spanish Town Police at 876-984-2305, the police emergency number, or the nearest police station. The Clarendon Police are seeking your help to reunite this elderly man with his family. He gave his name as Lassell's Maine after it was found wandering in the Oliver Garden area of May Penn Clarendon. Anyone with information that can assist us in reuniting Lassell's Maine with his family is asked to call the May Penn Police at 876-986-2208 or the Police Emergency 119 number. Burn victim Alicia King's ex-boyfriend, the man wanted in connection with the early morning attack that left her battling for her life, has been arrested. King, who recently turned 18 years old and returned to Jamaica after receiving treatment in the U.S., was severely burnt while she slept last August. Her ex-boyfriend, Antoine Gray, has been on the run since. The young man made it on the Jamaica Constabulary Force's wanted Wednesday list this week. Gray was wanted by the police for arson, attempted murder, and assault occasioning grievous bodily harm. He was apprehended on Wednesday afternoon in Central Village, St. Catherine, hours after the police released his image. So um, I can confirm that 19-year-old Antoine Gray who was wanted in connection with the alleged assault and burning of Alicia Keys, who was seven, King, who was 17 years old at the time. So he was wanted for attempted murder and assault occasioned in grievous bodily harm following an incident on August 24, 2023, where Alicia King was at the time 17. She, he was said to be an estranged spouse of her allegedly gas and lit her while she sleeps sometime after three in the morning. Since then, he has been on the run and we have been searching for him. We intensified the, 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 the search a few weeks ago because we knew that um, Alicia would return to the island yesterday following months of treatment overseas. Um, that was coordinated by the San Marino Foundation. So we know there was some discomfort. She, she had some concerns. So we really needed to reduce that level of fear for herself and the family. So a team of police, so he was featured on our Wanted Wednesday um, in, in initiatives. And coming out of that posting, we were able to assemble a team from the Central Village Police Station as well as St. Catherine North. And he was found at a location on Browns Lane in Central Village. So he's currently in police custody and is being processed. A female um, was found in his company and she's, she was also taken into custody and is being questioned by the police. So we will have some more updates as they continue with the process of the investigation. But I think, um, especially for Alicia King, we are very relieved that he's now in police custody. And I'm sure that herself and her family will feel much better that he's now caught and no longer on the run. On Wednesday morning in Duhaney Park, St. Andrew, a vendor and his assistant fell victim to a shooting incident. Tragically, the vendor, identified as a man, has succumbed to his injuries according to reports. Initial accounts suggest that the vendor and his assistant, a woman, were present at the Duhaney Park Recreational Grounds around 9 a.m. when an unidentified assailant approached them and opened fire. The woman sustained a gunshot wound to her leg while the vendor suffered multiple gunshot wounds the perpetrator managed to flee the scene before authorities arrived. 
As of now, the police have not disclosed the identity of the vendor to the public. Police investigators are probing the shooting death of a teenager in Seville Heights, St. Anne, on Tuesday night. The deceased is 17-year-old Deshaun Gordon, popularly known as Sean D. of Seville Heights in the parish. Reports from the St. Anne's Bay Police are that about 11 p.m., residents heard loud explosions coming from a section of the community and alerted the police. On their arrival, Gordon's body was found in a pool of blood with gunshot wounds. He was assisted to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. It is being theorized that the teenager was pounced upon by unknown assailants while on the way to a shop in the community. No motive has yet been established for the deadly gun attack. A man was shot and killed on Howard Avenue in Kingston 11 on Thursday morning. The deceased has been identified as 21-year-old Dwayne Atkinson, otherwise called Twin or Biggie, a construction worker from Uganda Drive in the community. Reports reaching the online media are that around 6.20 a.m., police at the Payne Avenue checkpoint heard loud explosions sounding like gunshots and responded. They also alerted other police on mobile patrol in the area, who proceeded to the location. Upon arriving at the location, police saw the now deceased on the ground in blood, suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head. Lawman assisted him to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he was pronounced dead, while no motive has yet been established for the killing, the police said. Government will be spending $250 million to address the conditions of sanitary facilities in the island's markets. In making the announcement, local government minister Desmond McKenzie says his ministry is aware that the condition of these facilities need attention. The government will be providing some $250 million to repair and to clean sanitary facilities in all markets across Jamaica. This is a program that will deal with the sanitary concerns of both vendors and shoppers in the market. The minister was speaking at the recent official opening of the Port Maria Market in St. Mary. He also disclosed that final designs for the Highgate Market to include a proper transportation centre had been completed. This project is expected to cost about $200 million. In the new financial year coming, the market will go out to tender. And so the people in Highgate, we have to wait. Jamaican dance hall star Movado has reached a settlement with Ugandan promoter Chinidu Ikaroha in a long standing legal dispute over a failed concert in the East African country over a decade ago. On Friday, February 16, during a conference with Magistrate Judge Joseph Maritalo in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of New York, the DJ in Ikaroha reached an agreement in principle to end the lawsuit. The settlement terms, including any settlement amount, were not disclosed in court records obtained by the media. However, the judge ordered that the agreement must be finalized by March 18, 2024. In 2019, the promoter sued Movado, whose real name is David Constantine Brooks, and VP Records, who booked the artist through Reggae Planet alleging breach of contract and additionally leveled a fraud claim against VP after Movado denied that they were acting on his behalf. He sought the return of U.S. $60,000, allegedly paid to Movado as a 50% deposit U.S. $40,000, allegedly paid to Movado's reps for travel, security, and accommodation expenses, and awards for damages for at least U.S. $250,000 in concert expenses and U.S. $545,000 in lost ticket sales. The promoter also claimed that Movado was aware that he had mortgaged two properties to finance the concert. He said the properties were also lost due to the concert's failure. <laughs>